is a tax trap with your Social Security that's been there for several decades and getting worse over the past several years. What is this tax trap and how can you avoid it? I've got that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. Is Social Security taxable? Well, it depends. And, that, and therein lies this tax trap that you need to plan to try to avoid. I'm going to help you with that right now. You've been paying taxes into the Social Security system your entire life from your very first paycheck. And, and if you end up earning above and beyond the Social Security wage limit, then, then those taxes or those dollars haven't paid, uh, you haven't paid into the Social Security system on those, but at least up to this, you know, this, this threshold from your very first paycheck. It's, it's, part of, it's part of FICA, that four letter F word. This FICA tax that you pay is not a tax deduction. If you, if you pay, you know, five grand in FICA taxes, there's not a $5,000 deduction on your income taxes. So, so, so don't, get, don't, don't be mistaken. This is after tax money that you're paying into the Social Security system with. And, and I could get on a soapbox here, and I'm assuming you feel really strongly about this as well. The original design then with Social Security, if, if, if I'm paying money into the system after tax, then by golly, when you give it back to me, it better, I better not have to pay tax on it again, right? And that, that answer was, yeah, of course, for decades, up until the mid-1980s, I believe 1983, when Congress acted and said, listen, we are going to have to start taxing some of your Social Security. And what they did is they introduced a calculation where if your income was above a certain level, then up to half of your Social Security would become taxable. So not that the tax was half, but say if your Social Security was 10 grand, then, then up to five grand of your Social Security could be included as taxable income if your income was above a certain threshold. And then a decade later, and I believe 1993, 94, they then said, well, no, we need to add another, Congress said, we need to add another tier. We're, we're gonna keep the existing tier that was introduced in the early 80s, mid 80s, but we'll add a second one because we need to tax Social Security even more. And so if your income's now above this second threshold, then up to 85% of your social security will be taxable. Again, the, the tax rate isn't 85%, but say if you had 10 grand of social security benefits, 8,500 would be taxable income to you if your income was above these thresholds. And so what are those thresholds? Well, married finally and jointly, if you add up all of your other income, non-social security income, so, so IRA withdrawals, yep, pensions, yep, uh, capital gains, yeah, those two, dividends, interest on the bank, in the, from, from the bank accounts, yeah, all of that other stuff, all those other sources of income, plus half of your Social Security, married finally jointly, if that number is above 32,000, then some of your Social Security starts getting added to the taxable side of your tax return. That's the, the and then up to, up to 50%. But then if your income continues to go higher, up above 44,000, married filing jointly, these numbers are lower if, uh, if, you're, if you're filing single, up over 44,000, then more of your social security starts becoming taxable up to 85%. And here's the social security tax trap. Those income th levels of 32,000 for married filing jointly, 44,000, it's the same numbers. Those are the same income thresholds that were introduced four and three decades ago. This is, these are the same thresholds, even though everything costs more, even though tax brackets have been expanded, even though we've seen lots of inflation, a lot of inflation in, in the early 80s, and obviously a lot recently as well, these numbers have not gone up. This is a tax trap, guys. More and more people are having to pay taxes on their Social Security each and every year because you're gonna need to have more income in order to, I mean, your Social Security is going up, but you're also going to need to supplement that Social Security with other sources of income so that you can keep up with the growing cost of living. So this is a tax trap. More and more people are having to pay tax on their Social Security when it was never intended for you to have to do so. So how do you get around this tax trap? Well, that's where comprehensive financial planning comes into play. And, and guys, in order to really get around this tax trap, it could take 
a long time, a lot of planning, years of planning, even throughout your career, so that you show up at retirement and on Social Security able to navigate. But I'm gonna share with you three ways, three strategies that we've helped people with avoid this tax trap on their Social Security. The first one is incredibly simple, but it can be very effective as well, and that is investment or IRA withdrawal management. IRA withdrawal management, and for lack of a better term. And, and here's the big idea. If you are supplementing your Social Security with a certain amount of, of withdrawal from your retirement accounts, but you're actually drawing out more than what you need and you see that, well, I've got extra money kind of piling up in the checking account or in the savings account, that might feel good. But if that means you're drawing more money out of your IRA than you actually need to, and you're having to, to pay those taxes, that means that you've got more money that's contributing towards this calculation than is actually necessary. I've had this discussion with some folks, I've shared it before here, where, where yeah, they, they appreciated it and they didn't wanna change it, but every time we'd meet, they said, yeah, I've got you know more and more, it's kind of swelling up, and I said, well, wait a second, if you don't need this money, this is causing you to pay more tax on your Social Security than is actually necessary. What if we brought your withdrawal down from, you know, in this case, I think it was two grand a month down to 1500 a month, would that still be okay? Yeah, that would actually fit just fine. And that goes to, to kind of the next way that this withdrawal management is really effective. Sometimes, I'm recording this in, in the fourth quarter, sometimes around the fourth quarter, something comes up. Hey, we need a new car, I've got a car repair, we, we, we uh, are gonna do a, a home renovation. I need 20 grand or we need 30 grand out of the out of the IRA or, or whatever. If withdrawing all of that out at once is going to stretch these calculations and cause your Social Security to go from not taxed or very little of it taxed to now having a lot of it be taxed, maybe you should consider, say, if you need 30 grand, we'll take 15 grand out this year and then January 2nd or the first week in January of next year, we'll take the, the, the next 15 grand so that you split that withdrawal amount over into to two calendar years, which actually helps benefit this calculation as well. So I don't know the circumstances and, and you know for, for you, but looking at ways you can manage your withdrawals from your IRAs can actually help this equation significantly. The second strategy that we love that can, that can help you avoid this tax trap on Social Security is using a qualified charitable distribution to give to charities and 501c3s instead of drawing the money out and then you giving to those charities right out of your pocket. A qualified charitable distribution, we've talked about that a lot on this channel. It's, it's a strategy that far too few people actually use that should. You've got to be over age 70 and a half in order to, to, to make a qualified charitable distribution. And the money needs to go directly from your IRA directly to the charity, directly to that church or 501c3. When you do that, that money goes directly to them. So it comes out of your IRA, but it does not land as taxable income on your tax return and therefore is not counted in this calculation of, well, how much of, uh, of your social security is taxable. Therefore, say, use this example, say you're getting two grand uh, out of your IRA every single month, and you donate uh, on average uh, five grand, or excuse me, 500 bucks a month to the church. That's your, that's, your, that's your tithe, right? If you're doing that, you've got a total of six grand for the year going to a nonprofit, but likely at this stage of life, when you're age 70 and a half or older, you likely don't have a lot of mortgage interest or other deductions, so you likely do not get itemize your deduction. You're getting the standard deduction, especially with how high the standard deduction is right now. Doing a qualified charitable distribution allows those dollars to, to come right out of your IRA and not be taxable. So you could reduce your withdrawal from two grand to 1500, but then send 500 bucks directly from a month, directly from your IRA, directly to the charity. The net impact is the same to you, cash flow wise and, and to the church. However, the tax burden is significantly less and it could result in you paying less tax on your social security, improving this calculation. You can even do a qualified charitable distribution of your required minimum distribution. So if you're concerned about this social security tax trap, out there when you are on RMDs, required minimum distributions, you've gotta look at utilizing qualified charitable distributions. And then the third strategy, this is one that you could implement throughout your career, certainly, maybe early in retirement, and that is shifting as much of your retirement dollars from pre-tax, 
IRA into Roth after tax or tax free. When I told you when you're supplementing withdrawals from your IRA, that lands on your tax return as income and it counts towards that all of the income plus half your social security. Well, if you're drawing money out of a Roth IRA, that is not taxable. So therefore it does not count in this calculation of all the other income plus uh, half your social security. Therefore, contributing to your Roth, Roth 401k, Roth IRA throughout your career, or at opportune times or early in retirement, doing Roth conversion so you have more of your wealth on the tax-free in the Roth side so that as you draw dollars out there, you can avoid this tax, this tax trap on Social Security. Those are just three of the creative strategies that you can implement to avoid or navigate this tax trap. It can take decades, it can take a long time to build up so that you can navigate this, uh, this tax trap in retirement. So work with your certified financial planner. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, corehorn.com. That's Corhorn with KYSMoneyShow.com. You can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go on, take your next wise step in your financial life.